good day and welcome back so today we're gonna uh, start talking about using the angular generator but before we get into the full stack generator which is the one we're gonna cover in this chapter we're gonna try to do a quick review of using yeoman and a yeoman generator started so I'm sitting here with two tabs open in my shell or you can open two separate command line prompt but um, I'm already in my um, directory, the subdirectory here for chapter nine, section zero one. I don't have anything in this directory, but what I want to do in this video, like I said, is review using the human generator and the uh, specific generator I'm going to be using is the um, generator angular. And if you remember, once we install human, um, you can, um, you know, install some generator. So there are a number of generator for backbone and a whole lot of other ones. And so this is how you install Yeoman, and we did that in chapter seven. And this is the generator for Angular, and which is the exact one that I have opened here. And the key to remember is that this is the generator name, but the naming convention for Yeoman is generator dash and then generator name. So let's just scroll down and look at the documentation how to use it. Now, if you look at this command, npm install, globally because these are things that we're going to reuse so we don't need to do it per project so globally and it's sending it uses grunt cli i mentioned that grunt and another one called gulp are task runners and, you know they do the repetitive things like building your application and so on monitoring it for changes and automatically recompiling it and so on and so those are task runner and so this one uses grunt by default grunt has been around a long time um, the relatively new one is gulp um, Bower, we talk about Bower too, um, using this to manage our client side dependencies. So npm installs um, Node um, JavaScript packages, and it's called a Node Package Manager. And you can kind of think of it as managing your server side um, component. But of course, Bower really turned around and uses npm actually to install those same JavaScript library for your client side. Client side would be your Angular, um, jQuery, all that stuff that you need for the front end. Uh, Yo itself. Um, you, you, if you just, you, when I clicked on the Yo page, you saw how installing Yo was npm install minus g and then Yo. So this command is going to install Yo if you don't have it, but we should have had at least these three um, from chapter seven. And then generate a Karma. Um, Karma is a JavaScript library for doing, um, writing JavaScript tests for your back end and your front end. And so this generator allows you to generate tests. And so we can see that how this Angular generator for Yeoman depends on Karma, so hence why they install it. So you can not worry about the details, just copy this and rerun it. And um, I ran this before, so I'm gonna, just gonna run it again. There's no harm in that. Um, if there are any updates, it's gonna install the updates for me. And so this is gonna take a few seconds to a minute or whatever, depending on the speed of your computer and the, your internet bandwidth, and basically maybe how busy their site is. So I'll speed this up so we can get through it pretty quickly. Okay, and it finished. Okay, great. So it's telling me that that's all installed. And if I again run tree, um, I can see that no changes was made to my actual project directory here. And so the next thing it's telling me is that you know you can install Compass, and I'm gonna copy that, if you wanna use SAS. There's SAS less than a few others, but SAS is one of the popular ones and also less. There are CSS um, language generators. So it allows you to write CSS, Cascade and Style Sheets, in another language that gives you some more um, capabilities. And so we're not gonna talk about SAS or less, but I'm gonna go ahead and install this anyway, just in case this generator, and I know this generator is gonna ask me if I wanna use it, and I'm gonna say no when I run the generator, you'll see. But here mine fail for, for, because I have directory permission. So I don't really care because I don't plan to use it, but I wanted to do the install for those of you who might want to use it. If you don't know anything about SAS or less, don't worry about it. You run the command, don't run the command, it wouldn't matter. So here it's telling me to make a directory for my project. After that command is finished, cd into that directory. So you can use that command, but I'm going to use the shortcut that I have on my system, which is to make a project directory, which I'm going to call demo app. And I'm going to call it like that. And notice it did the exact same thing with this command would have done, which is it made the directory and then cd into that directory. This dollar sign, as you know, in Unix-like um, system means 
um, evaluate a variable. The variable in this case is underscore, and that is a shortcut for the parameters to the previous command. Hence why that works. All right, now it's telling me that all for yo, man, it says run yo, and the name of the generator, and the name of your application, which is optional. Um, if you don't provide the name of your application, it's gonna pick up the name of the directory, use the name of the directory that you're in. So, um, so here, if I run this in this directory, it's gonna use demo-app as the name of my application. Um, so now that I have this directory, let me go into it also here. All right, and we'll see. Uh, actually, I can start my editor, that, um, use Visual Studio Code, and that starts and that directory is empty, and that's fine. And so, one of the things you can do though, is you can type yo, Angular, for example, like I said, name of the application or not, or you could just type yo by itself, enter. And what it will do, it will list um, the generators you have installed. So we just installed the Angular generator. When I installed yo in chapter seven, I asked the first generator I installed was web app, and that's the first one we played with. And then we played a little bit with AngularJS, and this video is specifically about this generator. Um, the generator I actually wanna teach you in this chapter is ng full stack, a little bit more complex, but it allows you to write more, I think, more enterprise ready applications. So that's the one we're gonna focus on. This is a nice generator to get started with, but this is the one we're gonna cover in this chapter, but we're gonna start using it in the next section. So if you don't have this installed, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to install the next generator. And of course, Karma is the generator that was installed in our command above. Mean stack, you don't need to worry about this. This is not your thing. And so don't worry about the generators you see I have installed just focus on the one that you should have installed, which is at least this one for this video anyway. And um, of course this, because that was part of the command. So this is one way to run your generator. You could select it and just press enter to run. Um, you can of course do things like upgrade your generator. Uh, if it, there's an update for your generator, it would say to the, um, to the right of the generator if there's an upgrade for it. Um, of course you can say, get me out of here. So you can run it from the command line. But I'm, since I'm already in here, I'm gonna run the generator from in here. And that means it run my generator and use the default, my directory name as the name of the application. It's asked me, do I want to use Gulp? And uh, since I didn't install Gulp, I'm gonna use the default there. Notice the capital N means is the default if I press enter, which I'm gonna do. It asks me if I wanna use SAS. The default is yes, I'm gonna say no. And then it asks me if I wanna use Bootstrap, I'm gonna enter because I want yes. And now these are some Angular uh, modules that is already selected from, for this application. Aria is for the um, Erin and Pair. I'm gonna leave that out. Message is also a new one, um, relative new one added to Angular 1.5, I believe, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave that out also. See it's using Angular route, which is good on all these other ones. So I'll leave those as default and I'll just press enter. And so it's gonna start running and it's doing its thing. If I look over here in my editor, I should see a bunch of files being populated and so Again, I'm gonna wait for, I'm gonna speed up the installation of these, um, not only node modules, but the file is gonna create um, for me and um, I'll come back when it's finished. Now, I need to come back and show you this. So even though it says done without errors here, um, notice how it's still sort of waiting. It says total time, you know, 343 milliseconds, but it's still kind of waiting here. So I'm gonna press enter and then it's gonna continue. So I don't know if there's a fault in, it must be because it's a bug certainly that it would be waiting for you to press enter and it didn't tell you that. It just sort of waiting there forever. And so um, it didn't used to work this way. I think it's just um, some bug that was introduced in some of the more recent ones. But once you do that, it's gonna continue and now it's finished. And so, if I look here, there are some files and so on, like I showed before. We could type three again to see exactly what was created. And we can see that oh, there were 3,000, there's 4,000 directories, 24,000 files. So that's a lot of files, but don't get scared by the numbers because it's just wanted to show you that all the things it included for you, the note packages and blah, 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 we didn't have to deal with. And so if we go back here and look at this, it's gonna say, well, you can use just grunt for building your application this is when you're ready to deploy it on a server, um, you finish working on it, or you could do grunt serve for preview. So let's do that. Let's do grunt serve, we run that. And so this is gonna run, and then it's gonna tell us that we start serving our application here on port 9000. And so here's our application. And we can see that it's using bootstrap, 
is giving us a nice responsive design. When the screen is wide enough, I could see my menu item here and that menu button goes away. But when my screen is now wide enough, um, it gives me the menu button here and I can hit it and it opens the menu. Okay, and you can see things just resize accordingly here. So let's see what does our menu button give us. So this home, of course, and this is slash. Uh, what about? It takes us to the route about. And then it tells us here the view has changed. And then what about contact? Contact seems to take us back home, right? This forward slash, pong forward slash. So it seems like they don't have a route for contact. And we can check that by opening our app here and then taking a look uh, in scripts controller. And there's no, uh, there's an about controller. There is a main controller. And for our app, they're just these two routes for slash, which is main and slash about. So we don't actually have a context um, thing. And we can go to the index.html file and we can see here are those links um, in the navigation bar. We have home going to forward slash, about going to forward slash about, and context going to forward slash. But one of the things you should probably change is this name. We don't like this name. It picked it up from our directory and it put it here. So we're going to call this awesome web app maybe. And so I'll, I can hit save or mine is set to save after a few seconds. So notice how it save and the page already automatically refreshed because grunt serve is in the background watching files and notice that this file change and rebuild the application and refresh my web page. So I can just kind of focus on doing things here, watch it update unless I need to actually do anything in the HTML. So um, one of the things I want to do is I want this to actually go to a view called contact. So I need that um, route to navigate to a route called contact. So I'm going to put that in here. And of course, this is not going to work anymore. If I click contact, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, you know, it will still go back to home because um, if you remember my application, it says anything other than these that are defined goes to slash. So it makes sense. All right. Now let's go back to our generator and see what our generator provides us. Well, this generator is called Angular, and these, what do they call generator here? Actually, sub generator. So this Angular generator creates, um, provides these sub generator for controller, directive, filters, route, and you name it. And so we know what a route is. A route is basically a controller, the view, which we see here, right? You know, your template, um, your controller. And then a route is what binds the two to give you this, to say, this is the route you visit. We're going to revisit this per option later. We, we talked about it a while back, but we'll revisit that. And so what I want to create, like I said, is a route for um, contacts. It seems like I need to just do is yo angular colon route and say contact. So I'll do that yo angular colon route and contact. And this is going to run, and it's telling me it created some files here. It created app script controller for slash contact.js. Created a test controller file for me, but I don't care about that right now. And it also created a view file for me. So if this is correct, and then look at that. It's also updated this to create the route here. So not only did it create the HTML file and the JavaScript for my controller, but it actually linked them together for me in this app, um, a JS file. And so now I should be able to click here and say contact and it goes to my contact route and show my view. And that is exactly what it did. Now, I might actually want to change my contact form a little bit. Like maybe I might actually want to put something like a H3 tag that says, please contact us by and, you know, um, you know, I'm going to list out some ways to contact us, but, um, now I'm going to let this save. And so there you go, that update. And oh, so that's pretty nice and easy. I could just focus on creating my application and I don't have to worry with all that boilerplate stuff. So, so that looks good. Um, so let's do this then. Let's say that I go to my controller and I want to put down some ways you can contact us. So let's say contacts. And these are different ways you can contact us. And maybe uh, what I have is an array of objects each with a certain type of contact, and maybe um, phone is one of them. Come on, phone, and then um, value here is going to be the phone number. It's like one eight hundred. That eight 
one nine two five uh, one two three four right and i'm gonna create a few of them because there's different ways to contact me us in this application so maybe i have a website maybe i have a twitter handle uh, maybe i have a facebook page right and so that's good enough and so let's fill that in so my website might be called um http colon for slash a my awesome app.com um, my twitter handle might be at awesome app my facebook page for this app might be http colon for slash facebook that come for some awesome app all right so there's some nice ways to contact me and so i have contacts this object which is really an array of these objects and it's assigned to this that contact well if you remember what we did angular so well now you probably don't remember this but you could actually inj to inject the scope here dollar sign scope and assign property state on the scope the other way you can do is to assign it to the controller function itself because there's a function for the controller with this and now when you do your route you use this controller as and it basically creates an alias that links to the controller so when i go here and i say i want to have a div a ng repeat and then i do contacts in contacts and then I say, oh, what I want to do is probably bold the type, which is C that type. And then I want to have C that value. Oh, I don't know. I don't want the bold to be there. I want the bold to be around the type. And there we go. And then I'm going to close this off. So now when this saves and when i look at refresh i don't see my list of contacts that's because i'm using this controller as and not the scope so what i really need to do is say the alias that's being used here this contact is what i need to proceed my variables here with so contact that and so now when i say contact that contacts what i'm really referring to is this guy and you can see now that works so oh that's pretty nice and easy um just two different ways of doing things and we cover that in angular eventually angular so i have that going and so so that's looking pretty good and so maybe um let's go look at another um thing here we have another the about page and let's say we wanted our generator to use our generator we said it already a couple of things you can gen sub generators let's say we wanted to use a service sub generator so my service and it creates a service for you so let's just create a task service for example uh, so we can say yo angular colon service and we can say task service and enter and now it creates two files the test one and you know task service and so i look and service task service and there it is if you remember the way i like doing my um, service is by saying var service equals to equals to an object and then i'm going to return a command return service and then here it allows me to create the functions that my service um, implements are defined but i can choose which one i want to put on um, the service so for example foo uh, return you know an array of numbers all right so return some numbers and i could say okay i want to expose foo as get numbers even though it's implemented this way Right, so nice separation. I can have more functions that are just private. Now let me just alternate Shift F to reformat to format my code. And so on your platform, it might be different. And so I said I wanted to inject um, use the service task service. Let me copy the name so I don't type it incorrectly in my about controller. So I'm going to put it here and say inject that for me. 
and here I want to say that I'm using I have these numbers equals to task that get numbers as I call that function so I'm calling foo indirectly through this property but that's somebody using your service would know that um, this is how you expose and so now I should expect that I should have access to these numbers and if I look again at my app.js here um, the, the, the alias for that is about so on my about view if I instead went and I copy this bam, and I come over to my about.html paste it here and I said I said, oh, I want to instead you do a ordered list. And this is going to be our ordered list. Ah, crap. Okay. And then here is going to be um, my list items. So let me just write this out before it's easier this way. List items that 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 numbers and I'll do that and I'm gonna say n in numbers because that's a the variable I'm gonna expose which is numbers but of course as we know this needs to be about because that's the um, alias being used in for this route for this controller so I say about that numbers and I'm gonna ng repeat it and well, bam. okay, so I'm going to format that again. And now let's see if when I go back to my application and I go to the about page. Oh, yeah, so I'm on the about page, but this is not exactly what I want. So this is creating a div, a new div for each number. That's not what I want. And I don't want a new OL because each new div will contain its own order list. What I actually want is to repeat the list item and so now when I do that this is what I want and so I was quickly able to create a service and focus on that and the details of my service and just wind it up to my application and having a generator do the grunt work or those tedious work of creating like the file and so on now um, there's some other things um, for example so a service and a factory are pretty much the same, and you could use them interchangeably. You can try that out. We really didn't cover using factory or provider. Don't really worry about it. Um, as you spend time in Angular and you need to use those other things, you can investigate it. Constant and value, they are so similar. And of course, a constant is something that wouldn't change and a value is changed. So this might be, you might use a constant to represent your application version, which wouldn't change across um, the application and from different controllers if you want to display it on different views or have it be injected in different controllers but a value might be something like the current user and of course you can do yo angular constant app version and of course value uh, let's say current user and if you look at the code that Angular generate, not only does it generate it in a service because it kind of look like a service, but notice the difference here. Uh, when you say a constant, you give a name, you give it a value. And current user, you know, you could say what the current user is. Um, it just means that oh no, it can be changed. And so Angular is going to try, um, Angular is going to insert the same value when it's a constant in each controller, whereas here it's going to insert a reference to that value and so it can change. But other than that, um, you can see that most of these things um, you can do. You don't worry about decorator really again. Um, a view on a controller, as you know what those are, you can call this to create a view, call this to create a controller alone, or call a route which creates a view controller and wire it up for you as we saw when we use this. So. This was just a review of not only using Yeoman really, but also the generator and the kind of benefit it, it, it gives you. And the reason why we did that is because this generator, this Angular generator, 
is much easier to use than the one I'm going to show you, which is NG um, Full Stack. The NG Full Stack is more for um, an enterprise ready application, application that um, needs to attack to a backend and needs to attack to a database. This generator is just like when we were writing our to do application, where it's just the Angular code alone and the Angular application, your front end application only. NG Full Stack, the reason I call it NG Full Stack is because it generates both front end and back end code for you if you wanted to. And that's all we're going to use it. So instead of saying, let's generate an Angular application and then let's separately write an Express back end, we'll use NG Full Stack to generate both and keep both in sync. Because what we're trying to do is cut down on the grunt work and just focus on developing our application. So in the next video, we're going to install NG Full Stack, full stack and then start using it. So thank you for your time. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video very, very, very soon. Um, if you have comments or feedback or whatever, please post them. Spread the word. Take care and bye.